Hi, this is Troy Lewis, lead pastor of Steamboat Christian Center, and this is Vision Moments, an inspirational video cast that provides vision, insights, and growth opportunities for you to stay resourced and connected to our vision to love God and to love people. Can't wait for you to hear today's episode. Hello, everyone. My name is Kyle. I'm one of the pastors here at Steamboat Christian Center, and I am super passionate about young adults and connections, getting people connected to the church and other people that go here. And that's what I get to work in. I know I'm lucky. Those are my areas. I want to say thank you for tuning in, for joining us for SCC Vision Moments, which is an inspirational video cast that provides vision insights and growth opportunities for you to stay resourced, connected to SCC staff and leadership, and engaged in our vision to love God and love people. And we've been doing these vision moments for a little while now, and I just want to ask you to take a second and reflect, how much have you actually been loving God and loving people? Over the last couple months, we have seen restaurants close and open and close. We've seen the mountain open. We've, see, we've had our first COVID Christmas. It's got a ring to it. Uh, we've seen a lot of division too, though. How have you handled these events? Have you been loving? Have you been loving on your social media? Or have you been fighting with other Christians because you think you are right? And that's the most important thing. I think that thought right there has been the source of a lot of disunity. I am right, you are wrong. And now what's funny is I haven't even brought up politics, but how many of you think that's what this is about? I'm actually talking about who should be the Broncos next GM. I'm just kidding. But the reality is, is that this thought of I want to be right, no matter the cost, can leak into many areas of our lives, from sports teams and small decisions to, to what you believe in the big decisions in our life. But for those of us who have this thought, who think, you know what, I'm going to put this out there. I don't care if I offend anyone. I would argue that we need to reflect on how much this is loving God and loving people. Paul brings up this notion in 1 Corinthians. In verse 9, he says, Even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. It says, when I was with the Jews, I lived like the Jews to bring Jews to Christ. When I was with those who follow the Jewish law, I too lived under that law, even though I am not subject to the law. I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. Then he goes on, he says, when I was with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too lived apart from that law so I could bring, bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. What he is saying right there is that being right is not the most important thing. Matter of fact, he is wrong on purpose so that he can introduce people to Jesus. He's doing things that he doesn't necessarily believe in, that he doesn't agree with, so he can do a more important thing. And he says, don't get it twisted at the end. He still obeys the law of Christ, but he's like, these little things don't, don't matter as much. What I eat, who I think should be president. He says, I'll get over those things so I can grow in a relationship with those people and then have an open door to talk about Jesus. See, what Paul is doing is he's building relational equity with people. He said, I am all things to all people. He is doing things he doesn't really want to do for a bigger purpose. Are we doing that? And what does that mean for us? Well, for me, it just recently meant watching movies. I'm really not what you call a movie guy. Never seen any of the Harry Potters, Lord of the Rings, Saving Private Ryan, Forrest Gump. I know everyone's like, I'm going to stop listening right now. But... Um, but I was just with someone who loves movies and I wanted to build relational equity with this person. So I decided to watch a movie with them and they could not have chose a worse movie. It was a rom-com and it ended with the, it was all a dream. I hate that so much, but I watched it with this person. Now, granted, I fell asleep, but I tried. I kept waking up being like, ha, that part's so funny, you know, just to let them know I was awake. But 
I, I realized that the relationship was more important than me hating movies. So what does that look like for you? What are the little things that you can give up in order to build a relationship? Now, I'm not saying you need to believe all the same things and agree with everyone to have a relationship with them. But what I do think is that we can have a higher purpose like Paul. Instead of thinking, I'm a liberal or a conservative and I'm right, I think we need to, need to know how to understand that other side so that, hey, you're different, but I can love you anyways. We can replace asserting our strong opinion with asking questions. That shows love. That shows an effort to understand. Chris Voss is, uh, used to be a lead hostage negotiator for the FBI for many years. And he tells us that the number one way to make sure a negotiation goes well is to work hard to hear the words, that's right. When someone says that's right to us, they know that we get it. We understand where they're coming from and what they're up against. Once we hear those words, Voss tells us, the rest of the no negotiation unfolds fairly smoothly. So I encourage you, Find out the other side of the story, even if you think you won't believe it. Try to hear the words, that's right. If a hostage negotiator and a criminal can do this, I think you can too. Do something you don't want to do for a relationship. All these things will build relationships for a higher purpose. And that purpose is Jesus.